All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the seventh day of September in the year of our Lord, 2023. I just got a slap on the wrist from YouTube. They deleted a video and sent me a warning uh, just directly. All of a sudden, I heard this alert on the... Actually, it was on my other computer, and... Hmm, really? The latest video I posted has been unposted. Not visible anymore. What was the content of that video? What was so terrible that would be deleted? I was scratching my head, and that was like a 20-minute video, uh, which is really short for me. Scratching my head. What? You know, I, I think one time before I had had something like that happen, and I was, I was thinking, what, what, what did I do? I was responding to a comment. At the, the, it was it was not my position that was in opposition to YouTube policy. I was responding to a comment that I was correcting, and my correction was not contrary to YouTube policy. This is the content of the video, the essential content, and it's always essential. We need to pay attention to this. This is Jesus in John chapter 3 saying, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another. As I have loved you, that ye also love one another. The brethren, Christ's disciples, loving Christ's disciples. Yes, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. This is not indiscriminate love of everybody. This is a special love we have for our brothers and sisters in Christ because Christ is in them and in us also, those who are in the kingdom of God. Uh, I'm sure this isn't what actually triggered the uh, the removal. <laughs> if it was, well, YouTube is <laughs> not the place that any Christian can be on. Uh, what happened was somebody had, had left a comment on a video uh, chastising me for binding people's con conscience for referring to the words of Jesus. This goes back, and I had done a video, I was commenting on on the, the pandemic and the, the vaccines and stuff, and, you know, based on what, not, based on what we know now, my, uh, my response in certain ways would be different. And everybody has to make a personal decision what they're going to allow to be injected into their bodies. Uh, the government did not force us to do it. You always have an option. Uh, you always have an option to say no, <laughs> no matter what it is. It might, they might kill you, but you can still say no. Uh, so, But this is what what's going on here. I want to alert everybody that I pretty much know why this was banned. Uh, YouTube, apparently, is there aren't people examining these videos. The amount of videos being posted, that would be ridiculous. And with the rapid spread of artificial, intelli artificial intelligence, quote, unquote, which is dumb as a rock, and I'll explain why, and I'll explain why AI does what it does. Now, I haven't looked deeply into AI. I don't have to. I have a background in computers. I know a little bit about what, what a neural network is. Uh, but, you know, how they work, it, it just, I can just, so this is what it does. Uh, basically, what it does. Uh, oh, I know how, how how it functions. Just like vaccines, they're not hard to figure out. And, and also, any you know, of course, people never want to say they're wrong. But any any new technology, regardless of what it is, my car, my father once upon a time bought a brand new car. A Dodge. 
and he always had good luck with uh, some of those. He had a new Plymouth when he was had a paper out in college. And, so he bought a brand new car back in 1960, I think it was. And I think it was the last new car he bought in a really long time. And that car had everything wrong with it. The clutch didn't work right. The thing smoked and burned oil. Brand new car. Well, what the problem was, it was the first year of a brand new engine, brand new six-cylinder, with the new latest technology rings, chrome rings. Well, chrome rings were, the, when they first came out, the coating was so hard, they never broke in properly. New technology. Never buy new technology. Wait until it's out there for a while and see if it works and safe. <laughs> That's what these uh, government agencies are supposed to do before they release things. They're supposed to test to make sure they're effective and safe, right? Thoroughly test, which takes a long time. Of course, in an emergency, you don't have a long time. So that I'll give them a little bit of excuse on, on some of this stuff. The problem is, when they deny it later, when the evidence comes in, it's like the, the, the vaccine that I took. I took a vaccine, YouTube. My wife and I did. Uh, the Johnson & Johnson. They don't recommend that vaccine anymore because it they had a side effect of causing clots, blood clots. That's what they say. Now, I don't know if uh, that could get me, you know, who knows? Who knows? And the, the problem is, is a, because it costs money, just like uh, I heard they were using AI at uh, a big box uh, grocery store, Myers, uh, because I was just there checking out and, you know, I arranged the stuff in my bags according to squashability and <laughs> content and weight, and I had, had set an item down on the bottom by the bag rack uh, because I was going to put it in a separate bag or something, and all of a sudden I, I turned away and a thing came up on the on the video screen on the check self-checkout and said, assistance required. And somebody comes over and said, what? What is going on? I didn't do anything. And she looked around, oh, did you check that out yet? No, I hadn't run that through the scanner yet. Because I just set it down because I was going to run through, you know, put it in the bag I wanted to put it in. And she said, oh, she's pointed at the camera and said, well, they use this this artificial technology now. And I said, you mean AI? Artificial intelligence? Yes. So I was profiled as a shoplifter. And I'll explain why AI does that. AI is conventional computer programming is deterministic. In other words... You have an algorithms, a, a, a logical algorithm written in code. And so if you have a certain input in, it'll produce a certain output. And that input will always produce the same output because it is hard, it's coded. It's logic, binary logic. There is no shifting and everything else unless you program something else in there. So unless you program it to a self-adjust or who knows. AI, they it, well, if it's in software or hardware, it emulates neural networks. And neural networks are not hard-coded. Uh, they're not like uh, computer programs. Even though uh, you can, a computer can be programmed to simulate a neural network. And... They are. They work like our brains, animals, you know, mosquito, things like that. Anything with a, a brain, uh, a clump of neuron, neurons. It doesn't have to be. And what it does. Those are pattern matching setups. So in neural networks, in your brain, every place else, uh, you get stimuli from all kinds of sources, and they filter through these neural networks, and each one is a signal processor and produces a pulse rate modulated digital output based on what's coming into it. So you can have cascading levels of these things. So when it gets enough, it, it'll, it'll, these neurons will produce a, a signal output uh, that responds proportionately to what the, the, the neuron or neural network has been, has learned. So uh, something, 
It's like looking at the clouds and seeing faces in there. There's no face in the clouds. But your brain is doing pattern matching, fuzzy pattern matching. And it, it recognizes loosely something in the clouds that is in its neural network and therefore responds with an, with an output. To, oh, and you recognize that as a face or whatever your brain is filled with. So that's, uh, but it's fuzzy. It's fuzzy logic. It's, and it's not really logic. So, and, and why you can't, this, this explains why they never explain what's wrong with your video. Other than it doesn't meet YouTube standards. Community, community standards. Well, where's the community that establishes standards? <laughs> it's not community standards. That's just a word they use. Okay, so, and obviously they don't want to pay people, just like the checkouts. Of course, you know these people, these companies complain about shoplifting, but they enable it by telling people to check themselves out. Ay, caramba. Because they don't want to pay people. And they say, well, nobody wants to work here. We'll pay them more. Uh, it's, it's just just nuts. See, they want to cut everything and competition. Capitalism, it's a problem with capitalism. It, it's not, it's cutthroat and try to maximize profit by, you know, that doesn't care about people. There's nothing in the nature of capitalism that cares about people. It has no soul. It has no God except lust of money. Uh, it's dead. So it, that's a inherent problem in it. And that's, you know, greed. Greed and fear, which uh, fear, like, like the whole thing with the, the pandemic, it was all driven by fear, the fear of the unknown, the fear of what might happen based on some really bad computer projections. That were just computer projections are not to be trusted because they don't have data, especially when it's something that hasn't happened before. What are they basing it on? The, the theoretical multiplication rate of viruses? <laughs> anyway, it, it takes a while for to determine what's going on. And what, what was really odd about this, this, this response to this thing was, was this guy was, was going after me because he said, well, you, tr you tried to justify your position based on uh, exposition of God's word. No, my position came out of God's word. If I'm being accused of expositing God's word, drawing out what the scripture teaches, what Jesus Christ himself teaches, who can argue with Jesus' command, love one another? Christians even love those that don't love Christ, the same way God does, which is, means we want them to be saved, but not the same way as the brethren, because we are one in Christ. They're not one in Christ. They're not in Christ. That's... But we don't want them destroyed. We don't want evil for them. God doesn't want evil for them. He sent his son into the world to save sinners. Destroying them would be easy. Wouldn't hurt. It hurt it costs God a lot to make salvation of sinners possible. It costs the life of his son, his only begotten son. So, uh, what apparently is going on at YouTube, uh, the love of money makes us absolutely certain, practically, that this is what's going on, uh, not paying people. It, and think, given the quantity of videos being posted, it'd be you know, the number of people you'd have to have to personally review every video would be you know, uh, crazy. Even the number of people uh, that would be required to, to personally review the number of videos being cast out by their software would be, you know, they're just not going to do it. It costs them money. It costs them money to carefully review a video and see if it really is in opposition to community standards. If it's really uh, a danger. So what do they do? They just throw it out. When in doubt, throw it out. That's, what, that's my view on what's in the refrigerator. If I can't remember how long it's been there, it's been there too long. Yeah. So that's what they're doing because that's the easy thing to do and the cheap thing to do and the safe thing to do. 
You got all kinds of people creating free content for YouTube. YouTube doesn't pay us. They got to get ads on YouTube. And I, I've never taken a penny from YouTube. I don't want to take a penny from YouTube. But uh, it's, I thought I was just too small to even get, do it. But that, that's, a, that's because I'm so small, you know, people aren't going to pay attention to somebody that gets a handful of views on something. It costs too much money. Can you imagine? Say I, my videos are often an hour and a half long, so you got to you got to pay somebody to spend an hour and a half watching one of my videos. Please, please watch my videos, YouTube. But if they had, if there was a person there, they would have been able to understand that my position was not a blanket condemnation of vaccines or of of uh, uh, even lockdowns or whatever. But rather my position then, at the beginning of the pandemic, when there was no vaccine, and you know and nobody knew what was going on, and we have to remember that when you start accusing people of conspiracy and everything, when, it, when later when people start try to cover up things, that's when you know there was something else going on. But, you know, like even shutting down churches, and that was the issue with this guy. Okay, I've got to pause. Well, I'm back, at least for a few minutes, so when I get through this. I have a pie in the oven, and it's a bit of an experimental pie. So, uh, I don't know exactly how long it'll take to cook. It is a butternut squash pie. Basically a pumpkin pie with butternut squash substituting. So, I know how long I do, how actually long it takes to cook. So, a pie waits for no video. <laughs> Here we go. So I, I, I probably looks like it needs like 10, 15 more minutes. Okay. Uh, I, I think that should work. I've never heard of a butternut squash pie, but I'm sure other people have done it. I didn't look. I didn't use the internet to find out. I have an abundance of them at the moment. So anyway, uh, and oh by the way, butternut squash, especially when it's mashed with a little bit of brown sugar and butter. But hmm, this would make a pie. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, uh, back to this video here. The the important thing, the overriding thing for Christians is love of the brethren. That's Jesus. This is my commandment. His commandments aren't the laws of Moses. His commandments are not the the uh, the statement in Hebrews that says, "Do not neglect the assembly of yourselves together." If people would even read the context, they would know. That's to encourage one another, to love one another, to strengthen one another. It's not to put people at risk. If you love the brethren, you do not want to put them at risk. And especially when we had no idea of even how this thing was being spread. Remember? So my position was this. We should, on the basis of love, the love of the brethren should determine our actions. And the church is not people gathering in a building. The church is God's people, period. Those who belong to Christ. And how do we love one another and care for one another and encourage one another and strengthen one another in that circumstance? By forcing everyone together in a big room with poor ventilation, which is any modern church. No windows that open. No. We function as the church. We love one another. We check on one another. So what, what are deacons for? Mowing the grass? No. Make sure people are cared for. Make sure... There were so many opportunities then to care for people in the church. Elderly people that were shut up in more danger, make sure they got their food. You know, contact, what do you need? I'll go pick it up for you. I'll leave it on your front porch. You know, that was what the church should have shown. That we should have been showing to the world how much we love one another. Love that's produced by Christ. Instead, what hit the news? Knuckle-headed preachers like John MacArthur and his protege from, from uh, uh, what is it? Uh, 
it was someplace in, in Alberta, I think it was, Canada. And to them, it's all about law. Thou shalt assemble. Thou shalt listen to me. That is not what Hebrews is about. If anything in the New Testament contradicts what Jesus says about the love of the brethren, it's not properly in the New Testament. And these knuckleheads, like John MacArthur, do not understand the Scripture. They do not understand the Gospel. I am pretty well convinced that man is not born again. He doesn't know God. Yeah, he can preach the scripture, but it's all full of John MacArthur. That's the problem. It's just like the, the main problem with Donald Trump is Trump is full of Trump. And it shows. So that was my, my position from then. I would say, no, we need to love the brethren and keep them safe. You don't want to put your brothers and sisters in Christ at risk just to keep a, a tradition. No, you want to love them. Do what it takes. And we can figure out how to meet together, communicate. You can't do that nowadays? Of course we can. We can do that. And not listening to a preacher for 45 minutes on Sunday morning is no big loss to anyone. It's the actual gathering together that's important. And that could be done you know, in smaller groups and everything else. Temporarily, figure it out. Does not God give us wisdom? Well, not some people. No, they, they, were, they go to the courts. They went to the world to get their uh, justice done. Hired a Roman Catholic defense team. John MacArthur hired a Roman Catholic legal team. Okay, so that's a, that was what the video was about, and I was responding to somebody that I said was binding people's conscience by telling them to love the brethren. My position on vaccines is this. If it's proven safe and effective, it does it, 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 it effective in, in reducing serious injuries and death and, and reducing the spread. And it doesn't have nasty side effects. You've been properly tested. Then take it. Obviously, see, AI, this, this, this is sort of edu an education. It gives me insight into how AI actually works, too, and how, and how unmysterious and primitive and stupid it is. Uh, there is no intelligence there at all, obviously. There's no ability to comprehend ideas in AI, either. It is simply a crude, fuzzy pattern-matching system, like the brain you'd find in a mosquito on a simpler scale. I mean, a mosquito makes a space shuttle look like a child's toy. God's engineering is far better than that. What he equips tiny insects with is far beyond Google's AI. Say it's just making something bigger doesn't make it better. It, it, the basic flaw of it is it patterns itself after human, fallen human behavior. So it's a profiling device. It's, uh, it's what they, the NSA uses stuff like this. And they, of course, now just get everybody else to do it for them. But, uh, so, but the NSA, at least, I believe, has human people that look at it to see if, if this is, you know, they flag something and then they take a look at it. No, that costs too much money. That costs too much money at YouTube. So no matter how stupid it is, it's, it's uh, safer and cheaper to simply throw the video out and send out an automated message saying that you've been a bad boy, regardless of the actual content. Because the machine does not understand the content. And given the fact they allow all kinds of other stuff, say, the, the, the thing is, Dumb. Utterly dumb. But the important thing was, it was an opportunity to remind people of Jesus' commandment. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Which would mean laying down our lives for one another, wouldn't it? By this shall all men, if you want to be a witness for Christ, 
This is how to do it. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Contrary to the boneheads that claim to be Christians and ministers who make things into a commandment to come to their church and listen to them and probably tithe to them rather than doing what Jesus said. They understand nothing. Don't listen to them. Listen to Christ. Follow him. Do what Jesus said. Just like Jesus talks about if someone compels you to go, what was it, a mile or whatever he said there. It would have, would have been in Roman measure anyway. Go with him too. What was he talking about? A Roman soldier occupying power compels you to carry their pack for a mile. They could do that legally. Volunteer to go the second mile with them. Tell them about Christ while you go. See, go beyond. We should have been going beyond the, the flawed directives from the powers that be and going better, showing them a better way. Showing them what it truly means to love one another and to care for one another and to be concerned about one another. We blew it. Well, at least the publicly viewed churches blew it. The noisy churches blew it. I'm sure there was lots of small churches that got it right. At least I hope so. But we don't know about that, do we? So when, when you're doing stuff for a, uh, YouTube, realize that there's no intelligence on the other side. And if you're throwing a bunch of stuff in there that might be trigger words, I guess, is that the current phrase for that? Think words that would be flagged or patterns that be, might be flagged or you're referring to what somebody else said. This is a dangerous thing. If you're repeating what somebody else said, that would flag it, but you are actually speaking against that, it will not understand. So pretend you're talking to a one-year-old, because that's what's on the other side, except, no, yeah, or a bug, an insect, the brain of an insect. Not talking about human beings, I'm talking about their AI. See, they're going to replace everybody with this stuff. And this is already the God that they're inquiring of, this utterly stupid, boneheaded, neural, artificial, simulated neural networks. Yeah, it can do certain things. It's just like a mosquito can respond and fly and do all kinds of amazing things beyond our human ability. <laughs> but it can't understand anything. And it certainly doesn't know God. Now, of course, these, are, these corporations are run by unregenerate people. The devil puts the people he wants in charge. You don't get up high in this world belonging to Christ. They did tell you that, didn't they? When, when you came to Christ, did, didn't they tell you to count the cost? You'd realize if you want to be somebody special in this world, don't come to Christ. Because... Christ is not about this world. Following Christ will not you get you ahead in this world with the things the world wants, will not make you rich or powerful. It might get you crucified. Remember that. Have you counted the cost? Do you love the brethren truly? The Apostle John in 1 John makes that one of the evidences that you have been born again, that you have eternal life. If you don't love the brethren, you do not have eternal life. You have not been saved. So trying to make a bunch of people, tell, commanding people to attend your church on pain of God's judgment during a pandemic is not loving the brethren.
That's been my position from the beginning, and it remains my position. I can do no other because I belong to Christ. His word is my command. 